Uh, my next question is from uh, Henry from Los Angeles. Uh, it's, uh, my question regards dampers. Do uh, dampers change significantly from road courses to ovals? My favorite. <laughs> and uh, could you uh, give an opinion on uh, who has an edge on development this season? Well, that's a great question. Um, do the dampers change significantly from a road course and oval? Yes, they do. There's, there's, there's certain things on the damper. There's Damper regulations in the IndyCar series are very open. They basically have given us an open box to do whatever we want to do. So we can change the damper characteristics, so the curves of the dampers, kind of the force, how much force the, the damper generates. We can also run what's called an inerter in the damper. And this is basically uh, how it's a, I don't want to say a mass damper because it's not truly a mass damper. It's basically a, a way to help control the oscillation of the car and oscillation of the body. So when, when the wheel, the road wheel, hits an impact, and what does the body actually see? The inerter is a good way of trying to minimize that body oscillation, which can further helps our aerodynamic platform and how much downforce we can maintain throughout in the car and on the platform of the car. Well, obviously, we go, we race a place like Houston, which is extremely bumpy. Big bumps, the cars catch air, it's really exciting. Versus a place where we run, we just won here with Simon, uh, the Indy GP, which is like driving on this piece of paper. It's the smoothest racetrack we go to. So we have significant changes on the road courses. On the ovals, we also have bumpy tracks and smooth tracks, but we've also got different vertical loading. So if you think of Texas, big banking, when the car drives into the banking, it gets a big vertical load on it, and we've got bumps and vertical load to deal with, whereas at Indy, we have very small banking, or Milwaukee, no banking. You've got to deal with kind of more of a lateral acceleration opposed to a vertical acceleration. So what the tire sees and what the car sees is, is very different. And uh, we use the dampers to kind of tune the car differently on the ovals also. We, we use the dampers to, um, how we look at cross weight is, is very important. So the, the weight on all four corners varies, right? And the cars see different loadings on all four corners. So we have to kind of vary what we do with the dampers there. Teams have gone a lot of different directions with these. Uh, typically, most teams you'll see with either a Penske damper, which is uh, actually a, a different company than Penske Racing, but it's a, a Penske damper or an Orleans damper, which is a Swedish company. Um, their theories are very different. Uh, there's a, uh, a Penske inerter is like a ball screw. It's a very mechanical damper. Whereas an Olin's, the, the inerters that you buy with those are all hydraulic. It's a very different theory on how you, how, what the tire sees and how you get that, the damping that you want out of it. Um, inside the damper, that's a whole different story. Everybody, all the teams are basically making their own internal parts to go in the damper. At least what I would call the successful teams are making their own internal parts to go inside the damper. And that's very bespoke, very secret information that goes inside there because it's, that's how you get the advantage here. It's an open box, and so we can do whatever we want. And uh, I think that's one thing our team's done very well over this off season is we've run in the top five every race this season because our car's making a lot of grip. And it's a lot of development from over the off season has helped that, especially in the damper department.